Hello and welcome to Whitehorse Music TV! My name is Richard Bodina and I'm co-owner of this lovely shop with my wonderful wife Michelle Bodina who's not holding the camera today, the music stand is. It's an inanimate object, my wife is not. Sometimes she is, late at night on the couch. Um, I may be in trouble later. Anyway, so today I'm going to be showing you some violins. Uh, which is very unusual considering we're a violin shop. Um, and, you know, we recently got some fairly fancy violins, around the mm, seven-ish thousand Australian dollars mark of violins. And so they are quite tasty, and I like showing off tasty violins. So one of them is this Alois Sandner violin, which I'm putting up close so you can see. What is striking about this violin is that it is not antiqued. It's sort of a little bit shiny and it's there, there's no artificial scratches on there or anything like that. It seems that so many violins these days in the higher price ranges are very antiqued and that sort of thing. And I sort of think it's, it's good that some are not necessarily antiqued. Aloyas Sandner violins, they have a few different levels. I think they have four different levels. This is their top level, which is very romantically called the 8149. Lovely name. Um, and it just uses the highest quality wood and the best workmanship and is clearly, from the other ones that I have seen of the Aloyas family, um, very well made in comparison. Um, this little sort of uh, indentation around the F hole there. It's called fluting and it's really beautifully done on this violin. So a very exquisitely made violin. Next up we have a Paul Ridden violin. Now I have done a video on a Paul Ridden violin before. This is not the exact Paul Ridden violin that I have done a video on before. So Paul Ridden is an Australian violin maker and this is fully handmade just by Paul. Um, the Sandner Violin. Sandner is a big company that's been making instruments since 1908. Um, but they make very beautiful, very high level violins. So possibly more in a slightly, in a workshop environment where the Paul Ridden Violin is, you know, just handmade by one individual person. And it is a more sort of antiqued violin. I wouldn't say it's got scratches, but it's been made to look a little bit worn and that sort of thing, a, a darker looking violin. All right, next up, we have a brand new baby to the shop. This one is, was made by an Italian man who lives in Germany. Actually, it's not necessarily made by him. It, you would call it a Lillo Salerno. Uh, workshop violin. So in a small workshop, just completely guided by Lillo himself, these violins are made and they are a little bit antiqued. And you do see the odd little scratchy on there um, to make it look like it's an antiqued violin, but sort of like delicately antiqued violin. You find some violins are very, very antiqued and they look like they've definitely been living for about 300 years. This one, yeah, looks really nice. It has a lot, nice little stamp on the back to say, yes, yes, that is what it is. It comes with a um, certificate and that sort of thing. Um, all right, so let's get to playing these violins. They are not pieces of furniture. They're, they're great to look at, but they also make sound as well, which is very exciting. So first up, a Lois Sandner violin number 8149. All right, give it a try. So that is beautiful and even and nicely ringing. It sort of looks like it wants to ring because it's got that sort of shinier 
varnish to it and it does it really rings it's not enormously deep down the bottom but I think where this one you know really does its good work is up the top as you go up the fingerboard I reckon that is one of the best E strings that I've ever heard in terms of what I want to hear it's sort of like full and resonant and um, really smooth and responsive just even more beautiful as you continue going up the E string going for a second I was mesmerized by the beautiful E string okay so that is the Alois Sandner violin now I'm going to play the Paul Ridden violin this doesn't have a particular model because Paul makes the violins and he makes them the best standard every time that he can so you know there's there's no need to have different levels of violins and that sort of thing actually his name is Paul Ridden inside it says Paul Sorensen which uh, he named it after his grandfather, so he was a, a violinist. So I'm going to give this one a try. say is a rounder sort of sound it's got it's got slightly more depth and is sort of like silky and beautiful I would say the the sander really really stands out on the top uh, where this still has a beautiful top but it's sort of like a, a more all over very round sounding violin and is extremely similar to a lot of um, antique violins that I play in that you know it sounds like it's been seasoned for about a hundred years or something like that so that is beautiful and now the Salerno violin let's give this one a try <laughs> The Salerno violin is a little bit more open sounding. It's nice and deep down the bottom, similar to the, the Ridden Sorensen violin on the bottom, but more sort of like ringing and open. And as you go up the string, you can sort of like hear more of that ringingness. Not as sort of like old sounding as the Sorensen violin, but really, really beautiful. I would say it has the edge over the other two in terms of volume. So slightly more soloisty sort of sound, I would say. I don't know. I don't know. I reckon you might end up having to choose all three of them if you're buying a violin. Now, I'll play each one, one after the other, without, you know, talking and stuff. Okay, so first, the sand no violin. <laughs> Mm. 
That was really nice as well. I got little chills up the back of my neck while I played that. That is sort of like an indication of a good violin. I, I sort of, you know, the hair stands up. Not that I have that much hair. If I did have lots of hair, it would be quite a good effect that all of a sudden all my hair stands up like that. But um, I think they are all beautiful. They all have their own special thing. And for me, this is why when people come into the shop, I don't necessarily say, you know, this violin is fantastic, you have to have this violin. I get people to try the violins, even if they've never played violin before, I'll play the different violins for them. I'll say, what do you think? Because, you know, everyone has different taste. Um, and it's like me throwing an orange at someone and saying, this is better than an apple, if I'm just choosing a random violin for them. So tell me what you think though. You might have like a taste that, you know, likes one more than the other. Thanks for watching and please comment below. Bye.